this week on Engage the Sage. Hi everyone, welcome to this week's episode of Engage the Sage. I'm Don Saucier. This week we're going to talk to you about when you're giving out assignments to your students and they actually are required. My teaching philosophy is actually centered on intrinsic motivation. I think that we should nurture on our students them wanting to do the things that we have them do in the class and then make the choice to do them on their own. But sometimes that's just not actually how education works. Now as a college professor, I can actually say to my students with a straight face that you don't have to be here, that you don't have to come back, and you don't have to do the assignments. And then hopefully inspire my students to make the choice to do all of those things. Now it's possible that some of you do not have the same luxury that I have as a college professor. You might be teaching, for instance, in a high school setting where your students actually do have to come to class and do have to do the work. It might actually be requirements for your students and not just opportunities that they can choose to do or not to do. The consequences of a high school student not taking the opportunity to come to class or to do work might be a lot more dire than the consequences of a college student not making those choices. So the question becomes, how do we frame requirements to inspire our students to want to do them? So one of the things that I would recommend that we do as teachers is to think about what is actually required in our class and why it's required. If we know why it's required, and we believe in that requirement, I think it's important that we let our students know why it's required. Tell our students why they fit into the curriculum. Tell them what they're going to do, what skills they're going to build by completing that assignment or by participating in that experience. Oftentimes the requirements that we have in our classes might have a curricular goal. Right, they might get them ready for another class later on in the major, another class later on that they might take in high school. But often, the reason that it's a requirement is providing them a life skill or a professional skill that not only do they need, but they want later on. Help your students buy in to the value, relevance, and personal interest that they can have in whatever that requirement is so that they find it engaging. I think how we frame our assignments is important. If we tell our students that they have to do things, that they must do things, that they're required to do things, they're going to look at it as if it's work. They're going to look at it as if it's something they should not want to do. If, however, even though it's required, we talk about it as an opportunity. We talk about it as an opportunity to grow their skills and to demonstrate their knowledge and to make themselves more well-equipped for whatever that class is preparing them to do. I think the students can still have intrinsic motivation be the reason they're doing the assignment. So what we can do is we can pull our students toward the assignments with the intrinsic value of the assignment rather than pushing them with the extrinsic requirement or mandate. One of the things that I think is really important for being a successful teacher is to be empathetic to your students' experiences. So think about what happens when people tell you to do things, particularly things that you don't want to do. Speaking for myself, I'm one of the more reactive people you're going to meet. If you tell me to go left, I'm going to go right. If you tell me to do something and tell me I have to do it, even if I want to do it, I don't want to do it anymore. So what I can do is I can be empathetic to that experience and realize that telling my students that they have to is probably going to turn a lot of my students off to that assignment in the first place. One of my students even said recently, if the GPS in his car tells him to go right, he'll go three lefts instead. So when I'm working with that student, it's not going to help for me to tell him what to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make suggestions, even if those things are required. And I'm going to try to let him know why I'm making those suggestions and the benefits of him following through on those. So I can invite him, inspire his intrinsic motivation to progress toward his degree goals, his research goals, and his academic goals without focusing on what will happen if he doesn't satisfy those requirements. Next, I want you to think about the assignment itself. One of the things we know about optimal experience and student engagement is they engage better when they're challenged. They engage better when they have some autonomy and some choice in what it is that they're doing. So if you have the ability and how that assignment is going to be fulfilled, give your students challenging options to choose from and let them decide how to pursue it in a way that is most interesting and relevant to them. This is going to give them some commitment and investment in the assignment so they can make it theirs and get more out of it. And therefore, you've promoted their success. Keep in mind, though, that if you're going to challenge your students, it's important that you support them. 
So make sure that they have the knowledge available to do the assignment, that you've taught them what they need to know, that you've helped them learn what they need to know, and you're providing them resources and support throughout the completion of the assignment. So if you want them to work, you're probably going to have to work too. And yes, I said you're going to have to work too, because if it's a requirement for them, it's a requirement that you're going to get the assignment back. When you get your students' assignments back, you should be excited to receive them. And more than that, I think you should tell your students that you're excited when you give the assignment out as an assignment. Let your students know why you're excited to give them the assignment, how you're excited to support them through the assignment, and how excited you will be to read the final products that they submit to you. Now this relates back to my concept of trickle-down engagement, that when you're engaged, your students are going to be more engaged and your students are going to learn more. By the same token, if you're excited to give the assignment, they're excited to get the assignment, I hope, and they're excited to complete the assignment. The fact that it's a requirement is still true, but it does not have to be your emphasis. One example of a requirement in my class that is actually not by my own designer choosing is in my general psychology class or introductory psychology class, my students have to participate in research studies over the course of that semester, or they have to write alternative papers on research articles to fulfill the same requirement. When I tell my students about the research participation requirement in my general psychology class, I don't just tell them this is something you have to do. I tell them why this is a requirement for the psychological sciences department at my university. I talk to my students about the importance and the opportunity that they have to contribute to the knowledge base about the human condition, that their experiences are used to generalize what we think happens for people all over the world, for instance. So I try to frame the research requirement as an exciting opportunity that they're not going to get in any other class that they take. And I think no matter how much it's required, it's always an opportunity. And I think as much as we can frame it in terms of intrinsic motivation, value, relevance, and personal interest for our students, the better we can be at promoting their success and fulfilling that requirement. We hope you enjoyed this video and we're looking forward to hear how you frame the requirements in your class in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, sign up for notifications, and share us on social media. We'll see you next time on Engage the Sage.